All right, girls. So um, let's check what colors we have. So you can see here some purple. Uh, for this, I usually use pink and light blue. Yes. You can also mix uh, with dark blue, and then you get different purples. Yeah. So then I have also two greens. I have light green, but I can also mix with yellow. And then I have dark green that is also good to mix with black sometimes. Yes, and then we get this, this part. Yes. For the, for the horse, you mainly need um, some white, and then you mix either with this dark blue or black, yeah? So you can see it's more like grayish blue, the horse, yeah? But lots of, lots of white paint in there. And, and yellows, yes, for these light parts. And, uh, so. so. Yeah. Yes, the brushes is usually like one one thin and one maybe a bit bigger. Yes, also for big spaces. Yeah, might be comfortable to use a bigger one. So pretty much our our usual usual set. Um, from the start, it might look, yeah, simple. Uh, the, com the complexity here is actually creating the, the horse in a, in a good proportion. Yes, we will try to work now on this. Um, I will wait to give me a thumbs up if you're ready for starting sketch. Yeah, but uh, wait for Ellie. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thanks, Juliet. Thumbs up. So let's plan. You see, it takes almost all our page, yeah, from ears to legs. So, and it's kind of really in the middle. Yeah, so that's what we do. Maybe we can start with little triangles. Yeah, but just kind of trying to position. Yes. And Yes, and then maybe somewhere here, the feet, yeah? So what I did, I have defined how big is my horse. What I do now, you can, yeah, so, I mean, imagine if you would have, yes, the drawing um, or, yeah, in front of you, what you can do, you can measure. And what I want to know, I want to know, like, the size from the ears to, let's say where the body is, and then let's say the body and the leg. So I just want to compare them all. Yes, yeah, see, so for example, the body is actually very big and it's almost as big as the legs are. Yes, and the head is somewhat smaller. So we can imagine this kind of three parts. Yes, the legs maybe would be a bit bigger, maybe somewhere here. Yeah, and so we're human, it would be the body. So this is how we usually do. And then you can, in process, you can go rechecking. Yes, so this size with this, uh -huh, maybe still, maybe a bit more. I can go here. Yes, let's say maybe here to here. Okay. And now, yeah, so, and then, like, since I have this. Three parts, then I can, it's easier get inside the proportions. Yes, you can say 
This is here, this part of the black here. This will be the Here will be the hair. Yeah, so you kind of analyze the horse part per part. Yeah, this nice, very pony hair. Yeah, also very something like characteristic. Yeah, and then we have here a bit of neck going out. And then we have this kind of big part, yeah, where the tail is coming out. Mm -hmm. And it's also wider, yeah, much wider than, than the neck part. And, yeah, and then we sketch this big dark tail. Yeah, it goes almost to the end of our middle, middle section. So it's not necessary if, that you color black, yeah, the dark parts. I do it so it's just easier for you to see. Uh, I mean, if you want, of course, with the with pencil, you can yeah, make some parts darker. And then come the legs. Yeah, the legs may be a bit more, the more lines, more kind of. Yeah, one can also should see in proportions. Yeah, it's kind of it's divided in many parts. So upper part, then the knee part. Yes, one is toward the knee here a bit wider. Yeah, and then we go thin again to the ankle. Yeah. Yeah, so if you look close, that actually you can see um, also so front legs. They're there, yeah, especially here on on the right side. So here is kind of ending one part of the leg. And then there is a, the other part kind of a bit looking on the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's very nice. So, for example, all these. There are many little shadows on the legs. And this is what gives the feeling of movement. Yes, because the shadows, they're not just, you know, for no reason there. They depend on muscle. So the way muscles are shaping, yes, that's, that's how all this light and shadow structure is created. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so one can take a bit more time maybe for the legs, yeah, to make them a bit more realistic. Mm -hmm. And then also is usually kind of sit back and take a look generally. Yeah. And if it feels that maybe some part is smaller, yeah, if it needs to be a bit bigger, one can yeah, just adjust, just add kind of lines on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
uh, all the time with these kind of structures, it's easy if you divide it in parts. Yeah, like we did today, we, we said, okay, here is the head and the neck. Then there is this fore part yeah, and the legs. Yeah, and first we we define the, the size of each part, and then inside of each part, then it's easy to to insert the details. Yeah. Yeah, and the background today is um, kind of easy. This is the this expressionism style. Um, so it was uh, this style became popular um, after impressionists. Yeah, all the movement, and it was also a little bit kind of counter reaction. Impressionists they were making very beautiful images. And expressionism was more connected, yes, with the feelings. And even if the feelings would be negative, yes, then um, they would also show them. Yes, it's actually more popular for this style that would show, like, the feelings of being worried or being scared. Yeah, these kind of emotions. Um, it's also connected with the, of course, with the history so the times uh, it was the world war in, in Europe so of course it was the people were yeah um, you know this depression and fear and scared so the artists they would also react on yeah so what I do I sketch out this blue river yeah now it's also easy that you, you kind of follow, for example, the Blue River. Uh -huh. It starts where the knee is, yeah? Then this, this spur, and it ends where the ankle is. So these are my tips, and this is my point where I, where I put them, yes? But of course, the background today is, is more free and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we will sketch this line. And for example, this this green part that it feels like hills. Yeah, let's say it's coming here from this corner, a little bit down, and on the right side it comes. Yeah? So we always compare kind of horizontally and vertically where the point is that we need. Yes, I need to find this point. I see where it is located according to the horse, let's say, because we have already horse, it's already, uh, we, we already drew it. So, uh, then this interesting purple part. Yes, there, it's also not accident that is coming this way. It's kind of crossing the head. Yes, this is one of the uh, art, uh, things that you use, you kind of put the lines in some important part. Yeah, so it's crossing the head, so it makes us look there. Yes, and then you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so something like this. How are you doing? I know you're usually quick. Yes? Yeah, thumbs up. It's me here talking too much. <laughs> I think Ellie's still drawing though. Ah, okay, okay. Then then um let, let's give her time. Yeah, no, no rush at all. There. Yeah, we should shouldn't. Yeah, you can. Slowly get ready your paints, maybe. So, or think, what do you want to start with? Um, my suggestion, and I like always start with the um, with light parts. So, I would start with coloring yellow uh, parts of background. So, not old background, but just the yellow parts. 
Uh, I like to start it because it's kind of, I save, yes, this light spot. So once it's colored, then I know I don't go there and I save them because we know it's easy to make, yes, um, dark, yeah? like the river I would make in the end because it's, it's dark and then, yeah. So let's start with the yellow part, then we can do the horse. And then we come back again to, to the background, yeah, to finish the greens and the, and the purples. Mm -hmm. And here again, you know that, so either you use yellow, the pure yellow, yeah, but you can also make gradu gradient. Maybe the upper part can be lighter yellow. So it means I mix it with white. Yeah, then it will be more pale. And the lower part, I can make, for example, darker by adding a little bit of red. Yes, yeah, so it becomes a bit more orange. Or maybe you have also, yeah, this kind of ochre color. Yeah, then you can use this one. So, yeah, and I take a little bit bigger brush. Yeah, depending what paper size you have. Then uh, yes, you can, uh, yeah, so maybe when I need to go somewhere around the horse, then I use a bit smaller brush, yeah. And yeah, how's Ellie? Is she good? No, not yet. Okay, so shall, we, shall we wait a little bit, yeah? So we started together with, uh, with Ellie. What you say? Yeah. I mean, I know I have no problem, but yeah, it's because then maybe if she's, um, yeah, it's, it's better to be together and no one is left out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually it, of course, can start, yeah, and it's no. And for example, you also remember, so if I say upper part of yellow is lighter, then I said you either can mix it with white or you can kind of add water and then it also becomes, and it just becomes more transparent. But this is so these two ways of making uh, something lighter, yes. And for this lower part, then for example, I can go almost without water, just putting paint straight from yeah, from the tube, and then it will be more intense, more huh? and and another thing, another tip. So for example, if you are if you are putting color and for some reason, yeah, it's not covering everything, kind of leaving emptiness between brush strokes, then my suggestion is you know not to not to insist and and go over again and again. The best way is just kind of Continue, yeah, drawing in other sections, and then later you just come back and do the second layer of the same color, yeah, because um, then it it would then it covers well. Yeah, it depends. Uh, sometimes it depends on the paper. Yeah, what paper you have. Sometimes it can be maybe too kind of. Very, very, uh, yeah, the texture. Some some papers have this, this texture and sometimes are very without texture. So, yeah, so here I go. Later, of course, we can go on top of this yellow, yeah, with some light green, as we see also in this painting.
So I have these upper parts of yellow, and then I will go also. And the lower part, I will try to make a little bit darker. Yeah. Yes, also, no worries for some parts. You can color over because you remember that yellow is an easy one to go on top. Yeah, so for this, some darker parts of orange yeah, that I see on top of the yellows. Yeah, later will be no problem to do. So here. And as the next one, I will take. So if if I'm going too quickly, yeah, Julie, if you remember, you just tell me. Because huh? uh, I don't see how you uh, go, and you know, for me, no problem to. So what, what I take, I take one, the dark blue and I take black. Yeah, on the camera, you probably see them too, both too dark. Yeah, um, the dark blue, that's how it usually, yeah. But Are you painting the yellow part of the background yet? Okay, yeah, cool, very good. Yeah, thanks for telling me. Now let's, let's finish both, yeah, at least well, and then we move to, to the fourth. So I can meanwhile tell you a bit more about this painter. Yeah, so um, as he was developing his artistic skills, he started to paint more and more animals. Yeah, he even went to study some biology. So he, he would learn the anatomic parts of animals, then he could yeah, and, and he, he loved animals a lot. So he would paint a lot of also foxes, yeah, horses a lot. Um, yeah, he enjoyed, and then he would always make um, these very colorful colors. Yeah, sometimes even animals would appear maybe green or red, some, some unusual colors. No? And, and unfortunately, this, this, Painter Franz uh, Mark, he died uh, very early, exactly because it was he went for for the war, and then he was injured and and then he died in a hospital. So he was maybe thirty six years old when he died, so he couldn't. Yeah. Uh, so what he managed to paint, uh, that's that's what we have in him. Mm -hmm. And, but while he was alive and painting, then he founded also kind of a group of artists, and they called themselves um, uh, the Blue Blue Riders. Yeah, so some kind of the riders of blue horse, and uh, and then he, they were creating this unusual style of art. Uh, but. It's called expressionism. Mm -hmm. So it's also what how you can remember what expressionism is about. So it's really about to express. You express feelings. Yeah? So if some earlier art is more about realistic uh, or more about uh, creating, making things beautiful, 
than here. It was already not so important. Uh, let's say realistic proportions or um, yeah, the, to make drawing correct it was really to express feelings of artists and have people who watch uh, the painting also to feel uh, some emotion yeah or to understand what um, what painter wants to say if, if you agitated sad or uh, that, that expressionism is about Yeah, what you said, Jared. We can continue with the horse. No, I think Ellie's still painting the background. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, but the background, as you can see, we so we do just the yellow part. Yeah, and all the, all the rest we leave for after that. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if while waiting, you can also do it, think, what would you like to paint next time? Then you can tell me and yeah, next time we paint some of your wishes. And yeah, I'm always happy to, to prepare a lesson. Yeah, what you like. Maybe we could do something like a person. Make a por person, very interesting, yes. This would be a, a very, uh, very interesting try, yes. Um, do you have something specific in mind, like sitting person, maybe walking, no? Or, uh, all right, I will, I will research and that's a very nice idea, yeah. I will note, note down here my board.
Mm -hmm. So I can also explain, you know, Juliet, what we will be doing, how we will be doing the horns. Yes, I'll, we will mix blue and black. Yes, and um, you have to get the feeling. Yeah, so it's not too black. So you can still still see some blue, but the blue is more dark, more intense. And then we will paint these dark parts, like the hair, the, the tail. And then what usually always happens when you put yeah, some intense parts, then there is already little paint left on your brush. So this is a very good moment when you do some kind of lighter lines, yeah, lighter parts. Like with the time you feel it, for example, I put here a lot of paint, then there is no more paint in my brush. And then instead of going back and refilling, I use it to do some, some lighter parts. Yes. So we will create two piles. One will be this just blue and black. And the other one we will add to this mix a little bit white. So then it becomes just like this more like dirty gray. Yeah, gray, blue, bluish color. Yeah, so uh, in the end, you use just one brush and you refill it, do the, do the dark parts. And then when it's little paint left, you just go and it's already also a bit dry and like dry brush, less little paint. And then you, then it's easy to do all these, yeah, light gray parts. Yeah, so they are not, not too dark. Hmm. And you can notice, for example, here at the bottom of the legs, there is a little bit purple. Yeah, so we'll make these dark shadows. And then later we will come back and put some purple here. Yeah, so because then it looks like white, but not so light as, yeah, as somebody. So it's still kind of light in the shadow. Hmm. Yeah, so also so kind of keep it in mind later when we mix purple for the background. This is the moment when we need put also some. Hmm. Yeah, Ellie, how's it going with your yellows? Yeah, should be easy. I don't really know. I guess it's going okay. Yeah, also, don't worry if you got maybe too much yellow, because you remember it's easy to cover up. Yeah, so it's the same this spots on top of yellow and few spots of yellow on the bottom. Yeah, and then we, when we proceed with the greens and the blues, then you also adjust them. Yeah. 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 yeah? Okay. So, so shall we start with the with the horse? That will be more, yeah, more interesting probably. All right. Yeah. I'll go slowly. I will. I will explain all the steps. Yeah. So. Here I take, so from my blue, I take some part. Yeah, so here I have blue and I take some black. Yeah, with the black, try adding it a little bit. Yeah, so it's better to, yeah, fill in three times the black by a little bit than one time too much. Yeah, so I have this very dark mix and then I just go for the, the hair and the tail, yeah, because we see they are very yes. And so, of course, on on the camera, you probably see it's 
just very dark, but the color that you should be getting on paper is still, you can guess there is blue, yeah? So, but if you put blue without black, yeah, then it will be too light. So that's why we, we're adding this. Yeah, so here I, so I went around the ears, yeah? And I still have lots of paint on my brush, so I keep on with my tail. Yes, I don't go for this technique that I was explaining. Yeah, now that, yeah, so I wait till there is almost no paint on my brush. Yeah, so I can, of course, wipe it with the, with the, the paper the towel. Uh, yeah, if I already need to. Yeah, here at the end of the tail, I make a bit fluffy. Yeah, so this should be easy. We're just putting these two spots, the spot, the dark spot of on the head, and yeah. So let's see. I can, yeah, maybe I can still proceed with the dark one here. Here on the leg, yeah, just also some parts. Yeah, I keep some parts clean where I'll be putting. Another color, let's see, purple, yeah. Mm. yeah. And here's some. Yeah, so you just try kind of to repeat these shapes that I'm putting on the legs, yeah, approximately. Mm. Mm. So I have also here on the right side, of the body, I have also this shadow. Yeah, it's also dark. And yeah, on the back. So now we're just putting all the dark parts of, of the body. Yeah. And then later we will add this mix, we will add some white, and then we will continue to the grayish. Yeah, so, parts. Nice. Yeah. And of course, doesn't have to be perfect from the first time. Yeah, later we. We come back and if it's needed, we can go darker. Yeah. So if you feel there is little paint left on your brush, you can try, yeah, experiment with this technique. Because you see, when there is little water, the brush is kind of almost not not painting. Yeah. And you have kind of almost like scratch the brush on the paper. Yeah. But what it gives, it gives me more control that I don't color too dark and yeah, I can kind of um, now leave, leave some lighter. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, so we have here tail, the shadow on, on the side, and there's some darker spots on, on the leg. Huh? Yeah, and then I just use the same pile that I had and I just grab some white. And maybe I don't even have to go into this pile, just with the leftovers that are on my brush usually is enough. And then here, yeah, with what I have on my brush, I create here this grayish color. Yeah, it's kind of bluish grayish. And then I can go yeah, some parts. And if it's too dark, for example, now I've, I've done it and it looks too dark, then, then I wash my brush. Yeah, so then I remove this dark paint. Yeah, and then what, so I clean it well in the water, take, take time to, to clean. Then I use also the paper towel, yes, I wipe, because it's usually always 
there where the metal part is, the paint gets stuck there and then it keeps on returning on your paper. Yeah. So you of course can take just like let's say clean brush. Yeah. Sometimes when I paint, I use several brushes so it's quicker. Yeah. And then if I need, then I go back to white and let's say create this pile beside one one more next to it. Yeah. Even lighter. Yeah. And then I can now I can go and go with the variations. Let's say somewhere I might need um, lighter gray and somewhere I need a bit darker gray. Yeah, and so for example, here on the top of the body, on the top of the, yeah, the horse's paw, there is, um, there is light, right? it's much lighter. And then there are also yes, yeah, so remember again, you can use also water to make lighter where it's needed. Yeah, so this is very good exercise to practice gradients. Yeah, you have, let's say, just one, yeah, you have dark, and then you, so you try to make darker, lighter with, with the same with the same color. Yeah. So you either add, add white yeah, or uh, or the water. Okay. Yeah, and so if you paint and you feel it's too dark, what you do, you just clean good your brush. If you can wipe it with the paper towel and then come back. Yeah, come back also with some extra amount of white. Yes, with the with time you also get. Yeah, you just with time when you paint, you automatically get this feeling of yeah, how much because I need little blue, very little, just on the on the dot on the tiny tip of my brush, and um, and the white I need much much more. Yeah. So here I come back. I forgot the pony. So here I come back with dark blue to do this. Very very. Nice part, yeah. Each each painting always has some interesting moments, yes. And you, as an artist, should notice them, know about them, and yeah, show them. So, yeah. So then I go with dark gray also here on the bottom of.
yeah so we we have worked here mainly yeah these dark spots and then fill up yeah for example what i can do also if some parts i feel they're too dark i can go just on top when it's already a bit dry i can go just on top with white yeah so kind of blurring white inside directly on the painting Yes, and it can make my some of my parts lighter. Yeah, so it's also, it doesn't have to be perfect from, from the first touch. So we can also, you know, leave, then one can go paint other stuff and then you come back to the first. Yeah, it's, it's almost never possible to, yeah, to have it perfect with the, with the start. Yeah, so we, we do what we can, we leave it. And then when you come back, it's always like a fresh look. Yeah, and yeah, so you I will wait, you let me know when we continue. We will continue with green. Yeah, so we leave the horse, we go back to background, and as usual, we go from yeah, light, darker, darker. So with the yellows, then we go with the green. You see here lots of very light green. Yeah, green mixed with yellow, then some darker greens. Yeah, and then we can do purple. It's also with some pink. Yeah, and then we go for the dark blue river. And yeah, then, then we do the touch ups. So, yeah, two. In the greens. Kelly's still working on her horse, but I'm ready for the green background. All right, yeah. So let's let's give you yeah uh, some minutes to to Ellie to finish. Yeah, then, and then we go together. So 
I have two, two greens. Yeah, usually always also in the set. Yeah, but, but even if in a set comes only one green, then you know the, the yellow color makes magic with green. Yeah, it makes it very, very light sunshine. Yeah. Also be sure to clean well your brush because we, we've been doing dark blue, black. It makes yeah, brush dirty. So yeah. Some more time inside the water and then some cleanup with the paper towel. And then I continue. If not, then this this dark color will uh, continue. Yeah, and then you will feel it inside your green and it will make it dirty. Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, it's not so important to do when you move from light to dark paint. Yeah, but it's very important if you move from dark paint and then you start to, to do something light. And of course, uh, the brush should be clean. And yeah, so you put, I see you're putting green, yeah, Juliet. Yeah, very nice. So first, let's mix green with yellow, yes? to get this very light, yeah? And you see we have here lots of part, yeah? And you can, like this, you can fill in almost all, all parts where you have green, because then later you just go with dark green on top, yeah? And then to make this, yeah? So I have here, I have a corner here, yeah? So this, this middle. Yeah, so yellow, so green, and I think some, some yellow inside. And yeah, so with green, it's always better to use yellow, not white, because white will make it just pale. And sometimes you might need, yeah, to have it, to have like this more cold, cold green color. Yeah. yeah, and of course here you can go on top of yellow a little bit where it's needed. Yeah, so because you see some parts of yellow are not kind of this pure yellow, they have some a little bit dark green spots, yeah, and I can go there and I use more watery brush in this case, yeah? So if I have already one paint, in this case yellow, and it's already dry, and then I go on top with some green, but my brush is watery, yeah, it's, this is one of one techniques that it has also its name, and it means I put my green like light and it's so transparent. So the yellow is helping, yeah, by seeing through my 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 green. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, so here I did this middle part, some green areas. Yeah, here maybe on top, here on the top green, I also see this green, yeah, but as I said, so it's not, I do it very carefully, yeah, I don't, if I maybe put too much, I can always wipe, yeah, with paper towel on top of my painting, yeah, this also helps to remove some And then you can try adding dark green and and then you so it's good to add maybe first just the dark green the way it is yeah see how it mixes and then so I've already been explaining earlier in, in some lessons that it's good also to mix green with some black. Yeah, the same as we did now with blue, it makes it kind of more intense, more darkened. And so first I put the dark green, and then I will put the green and black mix. And adding black, yes, remember, it's always on the tip of your brush. Yeah, it's never the same amount of green and black. No, it's much more green and just a little bit black. You mix them. And if you see like almost nothing has changed, then you can add a bit more black. Yeah? It's always better add two or three times a little bit than one time too much. And then, yeah, you ruin the mix. You then you need to make a new one. Then you kind of waste a little bit the, the paint. And, yeah. Yeah, so here I put the light green, medium green, and here a little bit some this part. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then when you feel finished with green pirate, you wash very good your your brush. Yes, because again the green is a bit dark. And if we now move to pink and purple, yes, then for the pink, I also want my brush to be clean. Yes, because first purple is dark, for purple it might be no problem. But yeah, we have here some very light pinky, pinky colors. I think I added the green. 
All right, yeah. So I, um I didn't I didn't add the green yet. I'm working on making the green. All right, all right, yeah. You let you let me know. Um, I think Ellie is washing her hands. So shall we continue with the purple? Okay. This is how dirty they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think that Ellie's horse sort of looks good, like a person standing, but like their hair, but like like their back is facing the portrait. I see, I see. All right. <laughs> um So Juliet, um, yeah, for mixing, so if you don't have purple, yeah, in the ready mix, I don't have, so I will be using pink and I'll be using light blue. And you can experiment. Sometimes it's good to use also dark blue with pink. Yeah, then you get um, one darker, one lighter purple. But I always suggest to start with light ones because then you get cleaner color, yeah, then the purple is more beautiful. And here, the mix is almost half to half, yeah, half pink, half light blue in, in, in proportions, yes? But then you mix, and then you see um, if you want more pink or you want more blue, yes? Because then you can get purple more to pinkish, or you can get purple more to, to bluish. Yes, and then it just depends on your taste or what's what's it. Yeah. And um yeah, so I have this this um this dark, yeah, and then I go with the yeah, so it's nice when the the mix of purple color is clean, it's kind of the color is beautiful because sometimes when I take dark blue. My purple mix is a bit more kind of dirty, yes? And yes, so here I go a bit carefully around the horse head and the neck. And here this part with a bit fluffy, yeah? So what I do, I just kind of do this brush movements on top. Yeah, it's, I think it's only in this part, but it gives nice feeling to the painting. Kind of a moving 
as if it's a it's a cloud, you know, clouds sometimes get this shape of you know? Yeah, so no rush, go carefully around the horse head. If needed, take smaller brush. Yes, this is the part where the purple meets, meets the horse. Yeah, because of course, then in this case, the purple will eat our this light gray color. So these are these two dark purple parrots. For example, now you can notice the differences in, in the purples. So in this drawing I did previously, yes, this drawing that is ready, here my purple is more bluish. I was adding a bit more blue in it. And here my mix got a bit more uh, pinkish. Yeah, so this is just kind of to feel the, the differences. Yeah, then I can also take clean, clean pink and do this kind of here on top. You can feel there is a little bit kind of pinkish showing through. It's also the feeling of the clouds. Yeah? Sometimes it happens. So. So here also on the side, there is a thin line. And so I go with purple and then I take queen pink and do. Sorry, this. So here, these white spots, I have, um, it's kind of light pink there or light purple. So just add white, so just take some, yes, and it can be light pink, light purple, so just more white. So it's not dark, it feels yeah, very light, so it gives more light feeling. Somewhere else here in between the green, there are also some. Oh, and remember when I said in the start, so the legs of the horse, they look darker. Yeah, for example, it's also not the moment to compare. If you look on my pre drawing and the drawing ring that we're doing now, and you compare the legs, how it feels. Yeah, here. All the horse feels the same here on the drama we are doing now, because the legs are the same color as the body. But if I add purple, yeah, that's darker, then it it will get a bit more uh, deepness. Yeah, so so also a bit more careful. I check my purple how it looks, that it's not maybe too dark. Yes, but um, yeah, but it once added and it starts looking and yeah, so since. So we are, we are doing purple in this moment. And then, yeah. It's normal legs.
When I was trying to open reds to the purple, this is what happened to my glasses. I got spotted with acrylic paint. Aha, oh my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, how was your first learning through it? Nice. Good. Yeah. Oh, I also got on my nose. Oh my. <laughs> you look like you're turning into a zombie again. Oh my good girls. Yeah, wash your hands if needed. <laughs> I think I'm going to start mixing the dark blue. Very nice. Yeah, that's the final part. The blue river. Yeah, it will also bring very nice um, feeling of yeah, it will complete. Yeah, so here you see, I could, I played the game with the same. I was using just one blue, and somewhere it's dark, but some parts I was just putting more watery blue, and then it feels a bit more washed out and lighter. Yeah, so instead of putting the same, yeah, darkness, the same intensity. It's always, of course, good to, to make these variations. Yeah. Um. yeah, and here again, if it's not like sometimes not making, trying to make it very dark from the first attempt, it might, you know, because it's leaving these brush strokes, then you just color, leave it dry, and then. Then when you come back, it, it covers it very nicely. Yes. And, yeah, and to do these washouts of blue, as I said, you just then kind of come back with cleaner brush, more watery, go on top and... Okay. <laughs> yeah, and also think like, let's say, of the border of the river. Yeah, I can go kind of with a bit more Paint there a bit more. I'm yeah, making this. Let's not open the red like that. <laughs> I'm gonna do it that way. It's not onto my glasses. Oh my um, god. My glasses. <laughs> Be careful, remember the legs of the horse. Don't paint them over. Yes, so it's because I have this blue here in between the legs. Yes, it's actually the horse is standing inside the river. Only now I feel in the real one. Mm -hmm. So here also blue in between the legs on top. They're also careful. Yeah. So if needed, take smaller brush.
Um, I think I finished. Very nice. Ooh, I'm so excited to see your horses, girls. Let's take a look. <gasps> wow. Very nice. Such a feels. And, uh, you know, all this background is amazing. And the horse as well. Wow. So colorful. Nice one. Nice job on, on, on the background. Yeah. Um, my shirt got paint on it. Green paint on it. Oh. Uh, not but a very good. So, yeah, I hope the shirt is not too white. Then maybe it won't leave the... Yeah, the stain. Yeah, yeah, you finally to finish. Yeah, waiting. And Julie got finished before me. She was this quick. Yeah, because I, I still also keep on finishing. Let's see. Just. Oh, that needs more yellow because I forgot to color a yellow part in. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My glasses still feel wet. <laughs> oh. You can use paper towels if you have, yeah. And, um, oh, that one's coming. Oh, come on, don't get unstuck. No. Oh, yeah. you can kind of erase. Not on paper, but on these types oh, of boards, oh, you can. Oh, you can kind of erase this so it can. Nice. So I will search for some person to paint. Also, maybe something interesting. Yeah. Very nice idea from Juliet. All right, I will also take off the, the tape. Yeah, taking tape always slowly, more slowly than you want. Then it saves, yeah, then the paper is less damaged. Yeah, so such nice colorful course we have. Very good. Mm -hmm. 